Okay, guys, I'm all done. See, that's where the uh, the new relay is. We got the little reset button on top. Then I don't know if you could see uh, part of the ECH down there. See where the little green light is down there? That's bolted on to the electronics box frame now. Where before, it was just hanging loose. And, uh, you know, that's not good. See where, it's, see where I bolted that sucker on at right there? I don't know if you can see the bolt. It's hard to see. But before, the relay and the ECH was loose. You know, so they're vibrating, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't good for it. So now they're both bolted on, and uh, I cleaned it up a little bit in here. It's like I, that's the horn fuse. That's the uh, LT for the under tank light fuse. So it's cleaned up a little bit. I think the guy that had this before me, I think he put the second generation ECH on this. I think that's what he did. I think I think this is the second gen on here. So that's the main thing I wanted to get. I wanted to get that on there because before it was just hanging. It wasn't bolted on. And there's actually two holes where that's supposed to be. What I did was I raised this a little bit because I wanted to have the ECH bolted on as well, so that wasn't just hanging and vibrating. So, uh, I started already. We're tip-top with that now. Okay, guys, I polished up the front fender. Look how nice that looks, guys. Look at that, man. We polished the rear one up, too. It gets it a little bit more mirror -y. Yeah, so uh, I'm happy with how those come out. They come out really good. I, I mean, I don't... Uh, I don't think I can get them any better than that. They come out pretty damn good. So we got the, uh, the battery is being maintained with a 2 amp trickle charge, Thir it's 13 volts, uh, it's about 6.30 in the morning, once 8 o'clock comes rolling around, I'll do another voltage check on it with you guys. Okay guys, we're going to do a voltage test, we got the, uh, the new... 40 amp circuit breaker in place. Now I had to polish the front fender with it on the bike because I couldn't get the fasteners loose because stupid me used Loctite on the uh, Allen head drive bolts. I asked, I was able to get two of them off. The other two I couldn't get off. So what I might buy in the future is a bolt induction heater you know some of them are expensive some you can get for like 30 40 50 dollars and it has a little coil on them if it gets red hot you put that on your fastener and it'll heat up the loctite inside the fastener but i did polish that front fender with it on a bike it looks pretty good actually but if i want to if i want to give if i want to put like a mural on the bike i'm going to have to take the the, uh, the tins off and that means I'm going to have to buy a, uh, a fastener induction heater. So, yeah, like I showed you guys with that, um, with the EHC, that was loose. since uh, That was never bolted on since I bought the bike. I always knew that was just hanging in there. It was vibrating, which isn't good for it, you know. And the, uh, the circuit breaker was also never bolted to the inside of the electronics box. That was always hanging loose. So now they're... They're both done correctly. 
and uh, I'm going to fire this up. We're going to see what it reads. All right. I'll turn our enricher up. Okay, that's up. Put our pet cock valve on. The ignition on. Hit run twice. It's in neutral. Tap my little hickeys there a little bit in case they're sticky. And let's start her up. guys like the sound of that exhaust man man you think you're at a pee pick and drag strip man anyway I think it's a little bit better with that new with that new I was gonna say relay I think it's a little bit better with that new 40 amp manual circuit breaker because it's a new it's a new circuit breaker you know I don't know I, I, I don't, I mean, the one that was on there was an automatic circuit breaker, and um, I don't think it was for this bike, because, here, let me show you guys it, let me show you, alright, let me put my spectacles on, commonly referred to as glasses, or eyewear, okay, this is the, uh, the, this is the automatic circuit breaker that was on the big dog, there's no chassis to it where there, there's no frame to it where it could bolt on and where this should go there's two holes in your electronics box there's an inner electronic box that everything bolts to and on the upper left hand side there's two holes where this is supposed to bolt on to this has no framework for it to bolt on anything this is for a Harley Davidson because some Harley Davidsons they have a rubber thing that these sit in and that's what this is from probably the guy that owned this probably had probably had a Harley or he got this repaired at a Harley shop but that's what this is this is for a Harley Davidson so you know God knows how old this thing is and um it says automatic on it. You can't read anything else. You know, it's it's real. The only thing I can make out is um, automatic. And then it has something that looks like a two. Oh, oh, that's a twelve. And then it has twenty-four, either VC or V. Do you know what I think? I don't even think this is a um, forty amp. I think this is a thirty amp. I don't know if you guys can make it out. This is a 30 amp. I could, I could just barely make out the 3 and a 0 and the A. Which, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. But um, these call for a 40 amp. You know, so possibly this might have been momentarily 
making contact in there on startups to reduce the uh, the juice going to the uh, the starter and everything else that starts the bike. So yeah, the, the the guy that had my bike, the horn must have vibrated loose on him. He cut the horn off because I, I found a bracket from the horn from the old where the old horn was was you know the bracket was broken like he just like he 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 moved it back and forth until it snapped. Uh, he put a Harley Davidson ignition switch on this, and the rectifier was hanging loose. And when I, when I got this from Street Track and Trail, they they fastened it to the frame with zip ties in order for me to put it on the trailer. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a duck shuck and crying, crying, straight up presidential presidential shame, guys. How some people treat these bikes, man. They just do not see what I see. You know, they they don't see it. These bikes are their work of art through my eyes. That's why I do what I do to them. <clears throat> yeah, so for that front fender, Matt, if I want to take that off, I got to buy a bolt induction heater in order to take those those two bolts off. Because I, you know, and I'll tell you right now, guys, if I get those two bolts off, if I get that fender off, man, I'm not using thread locker on those again. I'm not using thread locker on them again. You know, I because on the inside of the brackets I used, Allen had drive bolts in place of the um, the the six sided bolts. I think that's why they put the six sided bolts on the inside of the fender because they're easier to get off. You know, and but my but the the Allen head button head uh, fasteners look better. So I mean, I don't I don't have to take it off unless I put a mural on the fender. If we put a mural on the fender, guys, I'll buy the induction heater. So okay, you guys saw the insides of the cylinders. They they actually they actually looked real good. You know the um, the cylinder walls still have the crotch hatch, the crotch, or, or not the crotch, the cross hatch design. When when you hone a cylinder, I used to rebuild car engines. When you hone a cylinder, the stones you have to use, they go up and down. And your drill is set at um, your your machine set at 320 RPM, and they go up and down like this. And what you want, the result you want, is the the hone the the honing stone marks. You want them like this. You want the scratches to look like this, not like that. They they have to look like that, and my cylinder walls still look like that. Uh, the exhaust valve has a little bit of carbon built up, which is normal, but I want to get rid of that before it builds up any higher, then my valves are going to start hitting that carbon. You know, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm running Lucas fuel treatment in here now. Every tank pull I put, I put a, uh, a shot glass of Lucas in here. Upper, upper cylinder uh, lubricant. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start putting in sea foam for every tank full. I'll put one or two shots of sea foam in the gasoline, and then we'll, after maybe 500 miles, we'll look at the ins we'll we'll do another endoscope look with the endoscope. We'll see what the cylinder the uh, the piston heads look like, the tops of the piston heads look like. So uh, the only thing I have to do to this yet is uh, we're polishing up a little bit more, polish the engine up, and we have to change the engine oil and the and the filter, and uh, then it's it's good. There's 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 nothing wrong with it. So take care.